Moving on, NASA's Artemis 1 mission delayed due to technical malfunction earlier this week, but the unmanned pilot mission to the moon is still set for takeoff sometime in the next few days, and on board is Israeli technology. With me to discuss is aerospace correspondent with the Jerusalem Post, Yafit Ovadia. Yafit, it's great to be back with you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Aaron. All right, so let's start with what happened to delay the mission. Well, first of all, uh, NASA engineers conduct routine testing before they actually launch the vehicle. Mm -hmm. And that's when they discovered that there was, in fact, some leaking from one of the engines. So it's good that they caught that ahead of time. But that delayed the entire launch. And I also believe it had something to do with the weather in Florida. You really need to have optimal, perfect conditions for launch. And that just didn't work out this time. What could have happened if they had not caught that? Is this like a an ex potential massive explosion on the launch pad? Yes, I believe it's one of those catastrophic, all the money goes down the drain kind of things. Wow, all right. So, okay, now what, what is the Israeli mission, uh, what is the Israeli portion of this mission rather? And you know, what, sure. what's, What's the mission of the Artemis 1, and, and how does Israel fit in? Okay, so first I'll get to the Artemis 1. Artemis 1 is divided into three separate parts. The first is to send an unmanned spacecraft, the Orion spacecraft, which was this mission, um, to space and have it orbit the moon and just test out kind of conditions there. The second part is to send the first woman to the moon and also the 13th man <laughs> in 2024. And then the last part of the mission is to eventually send humans to Mars. So very exciting stuff. Um, so far, the mission has been delayed to Friday or Monday. So we'll see how that plays out. Um, as for the Israeli part in the mission, I spoke to the Israeli company um, that has participated. They're called STEMRAD. And what they do is they design astronaut uh, anti-radiation vests um, for astronauts in space. Because in space, the radiation can actually damage internal organs. Wow. So they have these vests on board two different mannequins. There's a German one. Germany is also participating in the mission, and also Israel. Well, and I understand um, that they have that they're, they're they're named. Yes, they are. So they're Helga, and the Israeli one is Zohar. Makes sense. Right. Yeah, Zohar means light in Hebrew, so sure. it's pretty apt. All right. So they're sending these mannequins. They're wearing yeah. these vests, and you know how does how how are the how are the mannequins fitted to measure you know damage to internal organs? Right, so I think it's a lot of technical stuff. Sure. Um, they're just running a lot of testing, but I can also say, if you do recall, Aton Steve actually did wear this vest while he was in space mm -hmm. in April. So he already was the first, I guess, Israeli to test it out aboard the International Space Station, but this like, will be a second trial run. So. Right, I feel like we're doing things a little backwards. You know, normally yeah. we'd like to send a pilot, you know, pilot mission and then, and then try it out on humans. Yeah. In, in Israel's case, we're <laughs> doing the opposite. Right. All right, so, you know, do you think that the launch will go forward as planned by, by Friday or, or Monday in this case? Well, I really hope so. And I think that NASA has been seeing a lot of delays lately. Uh, mm. The Artemis mission was supposed to launch a while ago. Really? But there's just, you really need to have those optimal conditions um, for the launch. It all depends on, you know, a number of factors. It's not so easy to just send stuff to space. You sure. know, space has its own conditions that don't, you know, ask us what we think right. of that. Well, and I know there were hundreds, maybe even thousands of people at the launch site waiting to yes. watch it who are probably very, very disappointed. Right. Uh, but they'll have a, another chance in another couple of days. Uh, you know, can you, can you expand a little bit more about what the Artemis mission entails? And then, and then you spoke also about Mars uh, and, and there's Israeli tech that's heading to the red planet as well. Yes, there is. Well, first of all, on board the Curiosity rover, uh, which landed on Mars in 2012, there's already a small piece of um, Israeli technology. There's a cooler on board the rover. All right. But there's also another Israeli startup, Helios, that is planning on sending um, a reactor to Mars to kind of dig up the soil and separate separate oxygen and minerals from the soil to possibly build the first Martian, human Martian settlement on Mars. How, how would that work? Like, they're going to they're gonna create oxygen and an and oxygen-rich atmosphere out well, of nothing? They're already or? testing it on Earth, but they, they potentially want to test it first on the moon. Um, so this startup is called Helios, and they want to test it with lunar regolith, which is lunar soil. Sure. Kind of see how that works. And then from there on, because first, I think, I believe a lot of us, the plan is, the big plan, is to build a human settlement on moon and then sure. later on move to Mars. And that's kind of what the Artemis mission embodies. How many of these tests were conducted in, in the Israeli Negev? Because I understand that they built like this fake Russian, uh, Martian uh, uh, settlement there. Yeah. 
So I'm not sure how many, I'm not sure mm. of the exact number, but they have conducted several, they've been doing this for a while. But I can say that I did speak with STEMRAD and they did share with me that they're very Maybe excited the to be participating in this right. mission, yeah. Wow, all right, Yafid, thank you so much. This thank is you. such amazing news, thank you. Thank you.